as Christians, can we eat anything that we want? Will we be defiled by what goes into our body? Now, I think this is a, a super important um, conversation to have or teaching that I'm going to give because a lot of people believe that they can be defiled if they eat pork or uh, they can't be defiled if they go out and eat, let's say, Halloween candy. All right. Now, a lot of people take these scriptures out of context and they don't understand um, the realm of the spirit. Right. The Bible says that the spirit of God is foolishness to the natural man because they are spiritually discerned. Right. So if you are carnal, if you're not spiritually dis discerning, you will think that anything you put in your body, you're fine. Right. But that's actually unbiblical. So let's go ahead. So the Bible says in Matthew 15, verse 11, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. So the Bible's telling you that whatever you put in your body, this won't make you dirty in a sense of like the Lord looks at you and says, oh, you're an abomination or you're a dirty person because you ate that. Right. The Bible's telling us that what comes out of our mouth defiles us our swear words, our cuss words, how we act, how we live in sin, what we do with our bodies, that defiles us, but not what goes into our bodies. That will not defile us. So a lot of people will quote this verse and say, I can eat anything, no witch and warlock can do nothing to me, so I can just go eat anything in the world. It doesn't work like that. And if you quote that script scripture, it's completely out of context. You need to pray over your food, and sometimes the Holy Spirit will give you revelation not to eat this type of food, or not to eat this, eat from this person because they operate in witchcraft. Now, there are some foods that the Lord revealed to you that this food is high in chemicals. This food has lead. This food has uh, mercury or something in it. Do not touch it. It's going to make you sick. A lot of people eat food and end up getting sick. Okay, so you can't use that verse because you're going to you're going to quote it out of context, right? Jesus was talking about basically with the Pharisees, they would deem people as dirty because they ate certain foods. But Jesus was saying it's not what you it's you're not deemed dirty because of what you eat, but you're deemed dirty because of what you say or what you do. All right. So I wanted to give an understanding with that. Also, um, the Bible says here in first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18 through 21, observe Israel after the flesh are not those who eat of the sacrifices, sacrifices, partakers of the altar. What am I saying then that an idol is anything? Or what is offered to idols is anything rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. So the, the last supper, you know, um, us taking our communion and our bread and whatnot. That represents that sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross. Now, when we go and we eat of the food of uh, witches and warlocks, things have been sacrificed. We're partaking in another sacrifice. We're partaking in, uh, we're fellowshipping with, de fellowshipping with demons. We're eating food, sacrificing to demons, and we will invite demons. This is how a lot of people get initiated into the occult because of what they eat because that food was sacrificed unto demons and they will give you these food these foods that have witchcraft in it so apostle paul is saying do not eat food that is sacrificed to demons and you know you're not going to always know wherever you go if this is sacrificed to demons or if this is evil or whatnot so this is why you got to remain pure before god live in repentance and always pray over your food because a lot of people get initiated uh from the food that they eat all right so you need to make sure that you just pray over your food because you can get initiated at, you can have a curse put on you and initiated uh, at school, coworkers, teachers, daycare, whatever. So you got to pray over your children, right? And sometimes you may eat from family and whatnot and they're operating in the occult. So you got to make sure you personally, you cover your children. You got to make sure that you always pray over your food because if a door is open, you can become initiated, all right? The Bible also says, um, in Psalms chapter 69, verse 21, but instead they give me poison for food. They offer me sour wine for my thirst. So there are some people that, you know, they don't have good intentions. Okay. They will give you 
poison for food. They will give you spoiled food. They will give you food that uh, has witchcraft in it. They will do these things to come against you. It's common where people will um, do these things to people. My my uncle was my uncle was poisoned by his assistant pastor. My grandfather was also poisoned as well. I had to go through surgery. So these things are real, and they're both Christians. All right. So these things are real, and sometimes poison can affect you, right? You know, even if you're living right by God, these things happen. Trials and tribulations, they happen, right? Um, my my uncle didn't die. My uh, grandfather didn't die because of it, but they got rushed to the hospital. All right, so I want to put that understanding out there first. All right, and let's read the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with, with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Okay, so when people quote that verse, they're like, "Man, I can eat whatever I want." No, 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 no. So now you're putting God to the test. Apostle Paul said, "Do not fellowship with demons. Do not be partakers of that altar, that sacrifice. Do not do it. Do not do it. You're going to invite evil spirits." And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter twenty, Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty-seven and give no opportunity to the devil. Now, if you eat these foods sacrificed to demons knowingly, you are giving the devil an opportunity. And if you're living in sin and you just go eat anywhere, you're giving the devil an opportunity through food. It's called bewitchment. All right. The Bible also says in the book of Proverbs chapter 23, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Eat and drinketh, saith he to thee. But the more so that you have eaten, um, thou shalt vomit it up. So it says in Proverbs 23, um, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil high, hath, that hath an evil eye. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with you. The morsel that you have eaten, thou shalt vomit it up. So it's basically saying that there are some people that do not have good intentions. Eat, don't eat the bread of those who have bad intentions, that have an evil eye. Eat and drink, they say to you, but their heart, their intentions are not with you. You understand me? So there are people that will give you things, but their heart is not pure. They will bring you over and cook you food so they can seduce you to sleep with them. They'll do you a favor or present you food and you'll be like, mm, this is good and you eat it. You know what I mean? This is why you got to be careful. You got to live pure. You got to uh, be a person of prayer, right? This is not something to uh, promote fear. You feel me? Um, and the Bible also says in Mark chapter 7, verse 18 through 20. So he said to them, are you thus, are you without understanding also? Do not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. So Jesus was saying this basically uh, to tell people that you cannot be deemed as dirty or yucky or whatever by what you put in your body because it's basically destroyed in your stomach and you go to the bathroom when it comes out. So that's not what defiles you. So Jesus in that, in saying that, he declared every kind of food acceptable in God's eyes because the Pharisees are like, yo, you can't eat this, you can't eat this, you can't eat this because you're dirty. You can't come to the temple. You can't worship God. You can't do this because you're eating this, you know, so... Can a Christian eat pork? 100%. Can a Christian eat shrimp? Yes. But is it the healthiest food to eat? No. Is pork the healthiest food to eat? No, it's not the healthiest food to eat. All right. But people will quote the Old Testament and just ignore what Jesus said in Mark chapter 7, verse 19. It's not what we don't get defiled by what we eat. Right. But what comes out of our mouth, that's what defiles us because the Bible says, uh, in Mark chapter 7 verse 21 for it is from within out of a person uh, out of a person's heart that evil thoughts come sexual immorality theft murder and all these things right so when the Bible says that it's not what defiles us it's not from it's not from what we eat that comes in a man that defiles us but what but what comes out because the Bible says from within comes sexual morality murder theft and all these things so if you think that you sinned against God because you ate pork, you are uh, mistaken because that's not true at all, right? But you must not be ignorant 
and you must not go around just eat anywhere because you're putting God to the test. It's like going out to Halloween and getting candy. Now, there have been many times where um, the parents have checked the Halloween bags and they have found pills and they have things, um, certain things infused with poison and nails in the smarty boxes. You know, there are certain people who are evil. And imagine your kid ate one of those and died. Will you quote the verse and say, it's not what defiles. It's not what goes in the man that defiles him. Will you quote that verse? Will you quote Mark 16, 17, right? But because you went out for Halloween and allowed your children to go out to Halloween, you have put the Lord to the test and you have given the devil an opportunity to enter and afflict you. You gave that abuser that you knocked on his door, that stranger, you gave them an opportunity to give you poison for food. David said they gave me poison for food. Okay, so we are not supposed to eat everything, even concerning regular foods like that are not healthy. Don't eat it. There's some foods that if you eat it, the Lord won't say you're disgusting. Like if you eat a donut, it's not healthy for you. The Lord's not going to say you're disgusting. He's not going to say that. He's not going to say you're dirty. You can't pray. You can't seek my face. No, you can't. he's not going to say that because the Lord looks at your heart. He doesn't look at what you eat. The only thing that's an issue is gluttony. Gluttony right? God doesn't like gluttony, right? Um, but he has proclaimed all foods clean because it's not what enters us that defiles us, but it's um, what comes out of us, right? But when it comes to witchcraft and food sacrifice to idols, we are not supposed to do these things. So if you know something was sacrificed to idols, if you know your mother's a witch or something like that, don't eat from the food. Just don't do it because I pray for so many people that have been initiated and that needed tremendous deliverance um, from from uh, the bewitchment from that food. And there's many Christians that have died from poison. There are many Christians that have been initiated from uh, the food that they eat. This is not something to promote fear. It's just to build an awareness. So you, are, you become someone who is very prayerful. Uh, but I want to pray for you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray for this person on the other side of the screen. Lord, if they have eaten anything, that has caused an infirmity in their body, that has caused issues in their body. Lord, I pray for healing now in the name of Jesus, whether it's cancer, whether it may have started something in their body. Lord, I pray for healing in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, I pray for healing. Lord, let there be a miracle that will take place now in the name of Jesus. And any infirmity that may have happened, Lord, through bewitchment, through witchcraft, where they ate something, they partook, or they um, they... They fellowship with demons through the food that they have eaten. I just break it off them now in Jesus' name, and I command these to be coughed up. Food from your family is food from your mother, your father, siblings, uncles, aunties, co-workers, friends, relationships. I break it off you strangers. I command it to break in the name of Jesus. May everything be coughed up that may have entered through dreams. In the name of Jesus, Lord, whoever may have had bad intentions with this person, through the drinks, through the, through the waters, through the sodas, through Lord, the food that they have given them. We pray for deliverance now. May everything be coughed up and let them go now. And I pray for healing for each part of their bodies and each part of their bodies inside of them in Jesus' name. Wherever their Father God being afflicted, Father God, I pray for healing. Touch them, oh God. Let them be, let there be a testimony, oh Jesus. And I pray, Father God, that you'll deliver them from the food they have eaten, Lord Jesus. But some of you may have dreams where someone's force feeding you or you're eating food. You're like, why am I eating this? Or you're eating food and you wake up with a full belly, right? Uh, or you're eating food and you're looking at the food and it's like rat. And it's like disgusting food in your dreams, but you're eating it. I pray in Jesus name that that defilement will leave you in Jesus name. Everything that was unclean must leave you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray. Amen. Well, I hope this has blessed you. I hope this brought some understanding and wisdom in the name of Jesus. Be wise. Don't just eat anything because it can affect your body. It can affect your health. Gluttony can affect you, right? Eating the wrong things can affect you over time. Moderation. Moderation. Can eating pork all the time affect you? Yes. If you have it once in a while, you're fine, right? But God, uh, people get issues from gluttony, not necessarily by what they've eaten in that moment, but they, they, they get defiled from their body really so god begins to get upset with them because of gluttony until they repent because it's you're harming yourself right but if you have a donut once a week or whatever or pork here and there you're fine 
You know what I mean? But it's the, it's your lifestyle that affects your body, right? Always eat in moderation. Always, you know, be very careful what you eat. Moderation with how much you eat, you know, and also be careful where you eat. Uh, pray for your food and make sure you have no doors open to the devil because you are giving the devil, a witch, a warlock, an evil spirit, an opportunity to bewitch you.